Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, and if you're new here, my name is Michelle, and if you knew me in high school, then I'm sorry. I also had a bit of a glow up, and I always use this photo as an example, so like, ooh, shameless plug for my glow up. But I was a twi-hard, is that what we called? Yeah, I was like super obsessed with Twilight. I read the books four times over. They weren't exactly the books series that got me into reading. The Click series holds that mantle for me. But they were books that made me absolutely obsessed to my core, like so many other people on the planet. I believe they sold billions of copies of books, and I believe they sold billions of dollars at the movie theater. Twilight was an absolute obsession for a lot of people, and yeah, I definitely feel included in that. I saw a video the other day that said if Twilight is your favorite OG YA series still to this day, which I feel like it is for me, then you are a hardcore badass person because you endured like 10 years of ridicule and still ended up keeping your obsession alive, so I'm sure a lot of you fall into that category. Yeah, I decided during quarantine to reread Twilight. I was in the mood for something trashy and it had been a hot second. I believe I started reading the series in grade 9. I don't know what age you are in grade 9, but I am 25 now, so it's been a hot second, and I have maybe not in all ways, but I have in some ways matured since then, so I went in very warily when I went into reading these books because I did honestly didn't know if I would enjoy them the same way that I did when I was younger or not. I was wondering if I would see it as a bit more problematic because a few people on Tumblr back in the day pointed out that there's like problematic aspects in it. And I have to say, I enjoyed so much. I was balls to the walls so into the first three books. I read them within two days each. Like it was like the week after I started rereading Twilight, I was like, cool, I'm done Twilight, I'm done New Moon, I've done Eclipse, I've sped through them, and now I'm reading Breaking Dawn, and I have some feelings about that because, guys, I don't think that Breaking Dawn is a good book, and I remember not liking it as a kid either, but I genuinely hate it now. I feel like there was a beautiful series that I adored and loved so much that created, like, such a nice Pacific Northwest atmosphere, and it was, like, foggy and rainy and uh, so full of romance and obsession, and then you get to the fourth book, and you're like, Oh my god, this protagonist that I absolutely adored is becoming so annoying because she has a child that she doesn't want to get rid of and it's killing her, which some people might actually, like, really like that take. I'm just not one of those people, so if you're someone who is, like, so gung-ho about Renesmee and think that Bella and that aspect of her having a child, um, even though she gave up motherhood to become immortal, was a good aspect of it, then, like, maybe stop watching because a lot of my How Twilight Should Have Ended um, is based not on Renesmee even existing in this alternate timeline called the Michelle Cannonverse. So I have written down some quick notes that I thought of while I'm reading the book. Guys, I'm actually not done reading the book yet. Like, I think I am three quarters into Breaking Dawn and the fact that I felt so strongly about it enough to make this video releases about how strongly I feel about it, but keep in mind that I have read this book multiple times of times, just not being 25. <laughs> my first ending is actually one that my sister brought to light. She has never read the books, never had a Twilight obsession, which, like, good for her. It means she probably had a stable childhood. <laughs> the first ending is that Edward and Bella do just get married, and that's it. Like, we see them get married, and then Bella changes into a vampire after they have, like, an amazing honeymoon, and it's, like, all fluff, and it ends, and that's it. Maybe we see a little bit about like what happens with Jacob because obviously he's still distraught over not being with Bella, but he maybe ends up imprinting on Leah. Leah's actually the one character in the Twilight books who just like straight up doesn't get a happy ending. So um, I think we can all say that we kind of feel for Leah and the fact that Twilight author Stephanie Meyer came out and announced Midnight Sun. I was like the one person who was like, but wait, shouldn't we get like a Leah book? Because she was like, everyone literally got a happy ending. Like her her boyfriend who left her got a happy ending, except for Leah. <laughs> so Jake maybe could imprint on Leah even. I know that the, there's flaws in that theory, but maybe she, when she finally gives up being a werewolf and her like genetic code starts processing again, maybe he sees her in a different light because of that or something. I don't know. That's just my first theory and that's one that I feel like I would have been satisfied with. Okay, and then this is the second one that I feel like I would have been even more satisfied with. And this 
timeline, again, Renesmee didn't happen because I just kind of felt like that was like so not in Bella's character to have wanted a kid and it was really aspect that was added in later on, probably because Stephanie Meyer, I believe, is a mother and wanted to include the fact that Bella could have children, even though she like totally gave that up and they gave up seeing her family, but was also able to do that. Like it, I wanted a bit of a grittier ending to like a super happy book. So in this ending, Renesmee doesn't happen. So that like weird middle part with Jake doesn't even happen. What happens instead is that Bella is turned into a vampire and the Valturi decide that their clan is too big or like the Cullens are too strong. Maybe they want Alice and Edward and even Jasper for their gifts. And they came sort of in that war aspect again. They brought a bunch of people and maybe the Cullens brought a bunch of people and that is this new ending. So there's two ways this ending could go, but I think in either endings, what sounds really cool to me is that Jake, who has always struggled with Bella being a vampire and has struggled with giving up her, meets a vampire from the Volturi and ends up imprinting on a vampire because I think that, though I kind of understand that like Renesmee is that, but I think that that itself is super cool because he was like always struggled with Bella and maybe when Bella turns into a vampire he like actually hates it and is still even more repulsed because it doesn't smell like her anymore and he like kind of loses that like magic with her and it, it, he's not in love with her anymore so instead he's still there because she's like a good friend and he's him and all the wolves are there to like fight the battle and he sees this like vampire maybe even Jane I can't remember how old Jane is if that would be like age appropriate or not that would actually be sick that would actually be really sick I'm I'm here for that. Okay, so we came to the point where the Vulturi have come, they are seeking more power, or they are seeking to kill the Cullens, whatever the alternative is, the storyline behind it. The Vulturi is the main feature of the book, and when the war happens, the war actually happens. Um, I think even the movies can agree that, like, there wasn't enough action in the original book, so, like, the war needed to ensue. Like, the fact that, like, Alice had the vision of the war and we were able to see exactly what happened, it needed to happen. There needed to be some higher stakes, um, especially at the end of a four book novel. I just think it's very unrealistic unreal in a world of like vampires and they always talk about murder that the only people who die are the three, like James, Lera, and I wanna say Rachel, but I know that's not her name, Victoria. It's unrealistic that the only people who die are the bad guys and then H Harry Clearwater, even though he You've just had a heart attack. So yeah, I think that that battle ensues and maybe I was actually trying to think about who could die in a way that like you would feel sad but it wouldn't be integral to the plot. And I think that Esme and Carlisle, I know some of you might be like, what are you talking about? I think that they could die because then it's sort of like a metaphor for like the next generation coming into play because they no longer need their parents anymore, which Esme and Carlisle, sort of like the like maternal paternal part of the family. So without Carlisle's wisdom and Esme, who is just just a mother character, that it would be cool to see the Cullens then maybe stepping up and having their own family and like living in the grief of that. I don't really want to see any of them losing their partner. Like I was thinking like, okay, but like what if Emmett dies? Because Emmett's like more stupid and he battles in a stupid way. But like, I don't want that for Rosalie. So I, I didn't decide that. You guys can decide whatever you want in your ending, but this is the Michelle verse, so that's why I've decided <laughs> that Kylel and Esme will die. Maybe some of the Alaska people would die. Just a lot of people petered out in there. Some of the wolves would die because the wolves would fight on the Cullen side, and it would just be a little bit more dramatic. Personally, I find books are better when like the stakes are higher and you're genuinely sad at the end of it because their husband character's loss, especially after the end of an epic battle. I think Harry Potter did it really well, even though I still cry about Fred's death. So yeah, that was how I see that. Okay, and there is two endings after the Cullens win. One is that they are the new ruling power, whether they have destroyed absolutely every Valtteri except for Jacob's new super hot vampire girlfriend. Um, maybe she like joins them, kind of the way that Brie tried to join in to the Cullens before. And they are the new ruling family. They're obviously a lot more reasonable, responsible than the actual Volturi itself, who has been portrayed as like the bad sort of rulers. What if this was like a new age of new good rulers of the Cullens? And actually even playing off that now, what if the new rulers of Cullens made it so that if you were a vampire, you actually can't even eat people? Like, your food source is the same food source as ours. What if the new rules they implement actually just saves humanity in a way? Because then they're like, okay, well, like, we're vegetarians and now everyone else needs to not be eating people? I feel like that could have went over really well and, like, maybe 
Carlisle and Esme are dead and that is what they do for their legacy is that they're like they didn't die in vain it was always Carlisle's idea for us to eat vegetarian and now we are going to ensure that like every other vampire in existence goes to that living and if not we're powerful enough to kill them. That sounds really cool actually like I'm I feel like I'm, I've wrote down some notes but I'm spewing a lot of stuff right now and like I could be like watching this back and be like I don't know what you were thinking about but right now I feel like this is some like like it's not bad. <laughs> the other ending of that is that the Cullens win and there is still some Volturi left from that. Maybe the main three are gone. Maybe the wives take over or something. And the Cullens instead choose to go and live back in their sort of like humble life. I see this being a good or a better ending just because the Cullens have always sort of wanted their like everyday existence. Like they never really cared and vied for royalty. So it wouldn't really be in their character interests to be the supreme rulers of the vampire existence. So the Vulturi then would retreat and still exist. They just would not be after the Collins anymore. This is actually pretty similar to like what happened at the end of Breaking Dawn anyways is that the battle though it didn't do um totally ended the same way that the Vulturi were like oh yeah okay bye Collins we're not gonna like upset you anymore because obviously you're like a lot more powerful than us and it kind of left that like open-ended like maybe we'll be back but if a battle ensued then the maybe we'll be back wouldn't actually be happening because obviously they would have a lot of losses and be like man we are not trying that again we might have killed Carlisle and Esme but like that was a lot. Okay and if you are a fan of Renesme, I did write an ending for that alternate timeline as well. I guess this timeline would pick up after Bella is immediately changed and Jake is like walking downstairs and he walks right by Renesme and like doesn't kill her um, but it doesn't imprint on her either because it's just something about Jacob and Renesme that like isn't my favorite couple and I don't think it's a lot of people's favorite couple it is kind of weird so instead the person who imprints on her is Seth because Seth is a younger member of the pack he was one who always loved vampires and always cared for them and fought for the Collins even without having a love interest in them I think Seth was like the epitome of like pure so I think that he would do well with Renesme who is written as the epitome of pure and then in that timeline Jake either still on Prince with his hot uh, vampire Volturi girlfriend who I actually really like. I don't know who she is but I, I'm rooting for her. Um, or he in Prince with Leah in that alternate reality. So yeah guys. <laughs> Did that make sense? Did any of those make sense? I'm gonna uh, edit the crap out of this video and include a bunch of images so that maybe if you're a visual person instead of an auditory learner you kept up with me in this mess. Uh, let me know what you guys think. I really just pulled a lot of this out of my ass right now. So if you think of something and a different alternative ending on how Twilight should have ended, then by all means write it in the comments and write a big fat paragraph because my my endings can't be it, you know? Like I'm not the only one with good ideas on how Twilight should have ended. I'm sure I'm not the only one who didn't like Breaking Dawn, but I am sure I'm not the only one who has different opinions on like whether Renesmee should have lived or not and maybe Jake and Renesmee are cool but maybe Bella and Edward die against the Vulture or something like just something ridiculous I don't know so thank you guys for watching this video and I will see you guys uh in my next video and maybe I will come up with a different ending for the Hunger Games next time or something it was actually a good ending I'm not gonna come up with a different ending for the Hunger Games bye